The New Relic Insights Dashboard API is a REST API that gives you more programmatic control over your dashboards. This tutorial will cover how to find your API keys and navigate to the API Explorer, create and update new dashboards, read or view existing dashboards, and use dashboards created via the REST API from JSON templates to create a data app. The Insights Dashboard REST API uses JSON and includes five types of endpoints, create, list, show, update, and delete. These are especially helpful for creating widget and dashboard templates to share across your organization, automatically creating dashboards for new teams or services that are pre-populated with a specific set of metrics and charts, and using the API to view dashboard schemas and saving them in a central repository for source control and backups. You can do any of the dashboard API actions by using a curl command. You can find the information you need to do this at the top of the API Explorer page once you select a function. But for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the API Explorer to accomplish each task. As you begin using the Dashboard API, it's important to keep in mind that it only supports the dashboard functions for Insights dashboards. The API does not support these functions for data apps. For more information on data apps, you can refer to the docs site or check out the Insights tutorial about creating data apps on learn.newrelic.com. Before I can use the Dashboard API, I'll need to make sure I have the correct API key. The Dashboard API requires an admin user API key. I won't be able to use an account level REST API key to manage dashboards. So, in order to get my admin user API key, I'll navigate to my account settings by opening the drop down menu in the upper right corner and selecting Account Settings. Then, in the left bar menu under Integrations, I'll select API Keys. From here, I can search for my name in the list of users in this account. And I see that I don't already have an API key, so I'll click the icon at the far right of the row to generate one. Now that I've generated my admin API key, I'll navigate to the API Explorer page by clicking on API Explorer in the left bar menu. On the API Explorer page, I'll open the drop-down menu in the upper left corner and select the admin user's key under the account I want. This will automatically populate the API key field in the API Explorer. If I don't see it listed, it means I don't have an admin user API key. If that were the case, it might be because I didn't successfully generate one or that I don't have sufficient permissions in my account. You can refer to the doc site for more information on permissions for API keys. But here I can see that I do have an admin user API key, so I'll go ahead and select that. Okay, let's get started by creating a new dashboard. First, I'll scroll down to the Dashboards section in the API Explorer. I'll click on Dashboards in the left bar menu to open a drop-down list of API functions, and then click on Create. Back up at the top, I see a text field where I will paste my JSON. Next, I'll grab my JSON template. I'm going to paste it into a text editor first, so I can change the account ID key to my account number. There are two ways to get this account number. I can go to my account settings API keys page where it's listed right above the list of users. Or I can copy the first number in the URL for my account. Finally, I'll go back to the API Explorer page, paste my JSON into the text field, and then click Submit. When I do this, a warning panel pops up letting me know that doing this will operate on my production data. Since this is what I want, I'll go ahead and click OK. Now I can scroll back down and I see that I got JSON back with the HTTP code 200 telling me the action was successful. To view my dashboard, I'll flip over to my Insights account and navigate to the Dashboards page. And there it is, a dashboard all set up with widgets and metrics using my app's data. I want to note here that if I used a JSON template to create a dashboard that called or referenced data that I didn't have permission to view, I would see a series of widgets with the message this widget was added from an account you do not have access to. This can happen if I forget to change the account number in the JSON template, or if I simply don't have sufficient permissions. For more information on roles and permissions, visit the doc site. Another important thing to keep in mind when creating or updating dashboards is that the Dashboard API permits a maximum of only 60 widgets. If I were to try to post more than 60 widgets, I would get an error. 
If I needed to add more widgets to the dashboard, I would simply use the Insights UI. For more information on how to do this, visit the Docs site or check out the Insights tutorial on creating dashboards and the tutorial on writing queries with the Insights query language and RQL. The Update dashboard function works the same as the Create function, with one important difference. There is a text field where I will enter the dashboard ID in order to specify the dashboard I want to update. The ID number for a specific dashboard can be found by navigating to that dashboard in my Insights account and copying the number at the end of the URL. If you are updating a dashboard via the API, it's important to keep in mind what your dashboard editing permissions are set to. If someone else in your account has made changes to your dashboard in the Insights UI, you could accidentally overwrite those changes when submitting updates via the API. Next, I'll use the Show function to display JSON for a specific dashboard. To do this, first I'll click the Show option under Dashboards in the API Explorer menu on the left. Then I'll scroll back up and paste the dashboard ID into the ID field and click Submit. Now I have the complete JSON for this specific dashboard. I can use this JSON to create a shareable template that others can use to create the same dashboard in just moments. One final note about the show function. To help ensure data security, the show function will only return JSON that I have permission to view. If a dashboard includes data that I'm not authorized to view, I will get the HTTP response 404 telling me that the dashboard either does not exist or is inaccessible. Finally, here you can see three dashboards I've created using the Dashboard API, Plan, Migrate, and Run. I did this by using a set of dashboard templates designed to show metrics for key performance indicators helpful for starting, managing, or monitoring cloud adoption. Next, I'm going to copy them into a data app I've created. I'll do this by clicking Edit in my data app, then clicking Configure Data App. Then I'll click Copy to open a drop-down menu with the list of all my dashboards. I'll select the dashboards I want and delete the blank page that was included as the default landing page of my data app. Now the plan dashboard is the landing page I'll see when I first open this data app. And now I can see data for each phase of cloud adoption, plan, migrate, and run, all together for a much more complete view of my app during this process. Remember, the Dashboard API only works with dashboards. Once I copy these dashboards into a data app as pages, I can only make changes by using the data app UI. I can't view JSON or make any changes to data apps via the API. Now that you know how to use the Dashboard API, you're ready to manage your dashboards and get a better, more complete view of your app's performance.